Hello and welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. As you can see, I'm coming to you from a different location. I wanted to very quickly go over this car. What we have here is a vintage Bolink Invader Dirt Oval Race Car. This is a wide body, one ten scale car. I have owned this car since new and um, I just want to spend just a few minutes going over the pros and the cons of one of these Bolink Invaders if you are made into these older vintage Bolinks, which have a lot of charm. Um, this one here doesn't have any charm and I'll explain why. So we can see here that this is in fact a, well I don't want to call it a pan car, but the chassis is similar to what you would see on a pan car. This particular vehicle is in excellent condition. It does have four wheel independent suspension and you are going to get a considerable amount of camber gain. However, this car really isn't designed for hardcore off-road use. It is designed to be used on a dirt oval. You can see the rear tires have these grooves in them and they're a little bit more worn now, but originally the rear tires had some horizontal stripes straight through that you can kind of see them right there as well. Uh, so that these foam tires could in fact be used for off-road. Now, as I mentioned, I've owned this car since brand new and it has been a complete disaster to own and operate, even when originally building this car. One of the main issues was the quality of these plastic braces up here. So these are where you would mount the, uh, the bushings or the bearings in this case, as well as the motor. However, the design of these pieces made them very susceptible to warpage. So when I first built this car, the bushings would not even allow the axle shafts to, to press in. They were so out of alignment. So I had to clean them up and then I got some ball bearings to make them rotate a little bit better. And uh, that did work, but it wasn't easy to get all that, all that sorted. The shocks are actually rather good units. I don't know that these shocks are made by Bowlink. I find that highly unlikely but uh, they do work rather well. So you can see the rear end does have independent suspension, again with the camber game. They pivot on rubber O-rings. One of the major issues I also had with this car was getting the differential operational. When originally building this car, some of the aluminum pieces had quite a bit of flash in them. In fact, this ring here has kind of gotten itself out of alignment. That is not why the diff wasn't working. I always did have problems with this car's differential. Uh, when, when driving it, it wasn't bad. Uh, in fact, the softer suspension did lend itself to a lot of downforce, which was very, very cool. So driving the car at higher speeds, you could look at the car's spacing around the wheel arches and see that the car has dropped itself just slightly. So that was very neat. Body selections for these cars, I think are pretty easy. You can see that I do have this 60, uh, six, I think, Ford Mustang Fastback, which I think gave the car a very, very nice look. The original body is a Pontiac Firebird, a dirt over race car. So usually you would have a Lexan sheet on one side, depending on the direction that you are traveling. So this car is a BL2373 late model Firebird. This body was hardly driven, and in fact, I don't even think there's any major scratches on it. Simply because I found the thing absolutely hideous, so I never really cared for it. I also have this body here, and I don't know who made this body. It is a Ford Mustang Trans Am car, which is a quite nice body, I think. Again, I don't believe this car has ever even been rolled. I don't think there's a single scratch on this body. It's in very, very good shape. And overall, it does lend itself to a nice look on the, on the bow. I'm just going to set it on here. So the question, of course, is do you want one? Well, in terms of rarity, these are not very common. What is probably even less common is the stadium truck version of this. I think it was called the Bowlink Invader MT. And I do certainly apologize, I'm no expert on these vehicles. I have seen those and those are designed specifically to be an off-road vehicle, but I would very much hesitate to use one in an off-road situation. These are very nice cars to have on your shelf simply because they are a unique piece of RC history, but when it comes to drivability, I, I really did not enjoy this car too much. It really wanted to wear it through its tires very quickly. 
These tires in the front did have some uh, grooves in there. Also designed for off-road traction. And this car really was not driven very much at all. Again, as you can tell by the chassis on this thing, I mean, it is practically new. It has a very peculiar suspension system. The diff is finicky. The quality of the rear bulkheads is simply intolerable. But it is a Bolink and the quality of the fiberglass is quite excellent. I used to have a Bolink Eliminator and that was a great little car also. And if you're looking for something vintage and Bolink, I would certainly steer toward an Eliminator. But if you're looking for something kind of crazy in Bolink, then I would go with a Digger because those things were awesome. This thing has a very strange place in RC history and I really wish I had the ability to use it on an RC dirt oval, but that simply did not exist near my house. If you are a Bowling collector, then yes, this is a great piece to have in your collection. But if you have any desire to actually drive the car, I would tend to steer clear as the car has a lot of fundamental flaws that if not used in its proper application, like a dirt oval, is going to be a little bit strange uh, and difficult to overcome. So as the owner of this car for over 20 years, I can very happily say I don't like it, but uh, the car has been sold, so I do wish the future owner and this car a lot more luck as it, it definitely has the charm of a Bowlink, but uh, for me it, it never had any kind of, it never got any love from me, I'll tell you that much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, I just wanted to throw something out there on the Bowlink Invader as it is not a very commonly heard of or known car. I hope you enjoy these buyer's guide series. I think they're kind of a lot of fun for me to uh, whip up for you. And I do certainly hope that they provide some kind of useful information. Thank you so much for watching. I've got a lot more stuff coming up very, very soon. Please subscribe if you have not already. And you can find me on Facebook as well as Instagram at Ampro Engineering on both. And before you take off, please check out the link in the end credits to the band Blue Pinto. They are the ones that allow me to use all their songs in my videos. Thank you again, and we will see you all next time.